Okay, for those who are listening uh, to the delay broadcast, you'll be hearing this a little bit later. Uh, but for those who are going to be joining us live, they have not joined yet, so I'm waiting uh, for that, folks. And once I see that they're they're with us, I will begin our stories, His glory. And as you will see, I have a special guest today, and I see now that we are live. So what you're seeing on the graphic is um, a bit of information about my today is Wayne Tollison. And i got to tell you, that I may be a little bit starstruck at times because this is one of my heroes growing up that I tried to emulate in many ways. And I want to tell you a little bit about his resume, but I don't want to tell you at all because it would take uh, the entire time. But Wayne was a football and baseball star at Western Carolina in the mid-70s, and he led the nation in receiving in the year 1977, then turned around that spring and played baseball. Um, for Western Carolina and was the Southern Conference Baseball Player of the Year as a shortstop. Um, he was the 1978 Southern Conference Male Athlete of the Year, and you Western Carolina fans out there are very familiar with Wayne, as many of us are, and especially if you're from Western North Carolina and upstate South Carolina. He's also in the Western Carolina Hall of Fame, the Southern Conference Hall of Fame, the South Carolina Hall of Fame, uh, once he finished college, he was drafted by the Texas Rangers, chose baseball, and worked his way to the major leagues where he played 10 seasons in the major leagues with the uh, Texas Rangers, Chicago White Sox, New York Yankees. He's a native of Spartanburg, South Carolina, where he still lives in the upstate, and I am privileged to have Wayne Tollison as our guest today. Wayne, how are you doing today, sir? Rusty, doing great. It's uh it's uh, special to be on with you today, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to the next uh, 30, 30, 40 minutes. Well, I am too, and I'm hoping that uh, during this time, as I mentioned before, that I don't start stuttering and stammering around uh, because, uh, again, when I found out that I was going to be able to, to get you on, you were on my, my Christmas wish list, and it being December, it came true. Well, So what I want to ask you first, um, Wayne, before I tell you, kind of how I became a big fan is uh, you chose Western Carolina and I'm assuming that that had something to do with the fact that you could play two sports um, and because most colleges won't let you do that when you're on scholarship. So tell me about uh, your decision and your time at Western Carolina. Well, that, that's, a, that's a great story for me to tell now. And for those, uh, those young kids that are out there that may be going through that decision of trying to uh, pick a college, you know, it can, be pretty, it can be pretty testy at times, and it was for me. Um, I, the, the, the one thing I had going for me is I did realize that I wanted to play two sports in college, so the, the opportunities to do that, were somewhat limited. Uh, Clemson, uh, Bill Wilhelm, he recruited me at Clemson, and uh, the football uh, staff there just thought they had too many small players already, so they weren't interested. So that really started me to be focused at, at Western Carolina. Western Carolina was one of those schools that uh, something in the mailbox showed up every week, and they were always uh, you know, calling and wanting me to come up to Western, and I had put it off. I had put it off, but when other doors closed, I, I told my family, I said, well, it's time to go visit Western Carolina, so that's exactly what we did. It's kind of a unique story. It'll take a moment to tell, but sure. we went up there on, on a, uh, a Saturday afternoon. It was snowing when we got into the mountains. It really couldn't have been a, a worse day for a university to, to try to show off their wares, but uh, I actually took my, my future wife, Kim, with me, and I was with my mom and dad, and uh, Coach Johnny White was the, the guy that was recruiting me, and on the phone, he had all, he said, Wayne, you'll love being a catamount. The next week, Wayne, you'll love being a catamount. Well, here I am now on the campus of uh, Western Carolina University, and he said, well, when you get to the campus, he said, I want you to stop by the phone booth that's in the middle of the campus. He said, call me. He said, I'll be able to hear you, but you won't be able to hear me. And I said, okay. And so that's how I met Coach Johnny White in the middle of Western Carolina's campus. But I can assure you 
that are listening out there, it kept getting better from that point. Um, I was very interested in Western because they had a uh, they had a, a lot of small wide receivers that had been very successful. Coach Bill Haywood had some professional experience in the baseball side. So yep. Once I once I saw the beautiful AstroTurf field and sat down with the coaches and watched the, the style of play that was up there and, and met with uh, Coach Haywood uh, over the phone. After leaving campus that day, uh, even though I was reluctant to go, I knew that's where I was going to school because Coach Bobby Waters was uh, willing to do for me what uh, I see some of these athletes that are dual sport today can't do. And he put in, in my scholarship that when it was football season, all I had to do was football. When it was baseball, all I had to do was baseball. So that really sealed the deal for me, Rusty. That's fantastic, and I um, will pick up there and tell you that my older brother chose Western Carolina as his college, and he was a freshman when you were a senior, and immediately we got involved in Catamount Athletics, come up for the football games and things. First thing I noticed is going to the stadium, they'd only have one side. There was only a home side, basically, and the visitors sat there, too. Um, but I had a great view of, I think it was number 10, and I noticed that he was about my size, even though I was in the eighth grade. I, I grew really to be really large. I grew to be 5'9", 155 in high school. And as I told you earlier, I was a, um, a wide out in football player, and I was a shortstop in baseball. So naturally, my hero was Wayne Tolleson. Uh, unfortunately for me, I didn't lead the nation in receiving and, um, and do all the things you did, especially impressive when you take into account that you were only doing football in the fall and baseball in the spring, so you were missing spring practice for football and fall practice for baseball and still uh, performing really well. So anyway, I uh, became very interested in, and followed you and noticed right away I was reading the stats, and they used to come out in the paper each week with the national stats, and uh, I looked up and you were leading the nation in receptions, and um, boy, that made it made it even better. So when, when you, you made a lot of uh, solid connections at Western Carolina, and I've had a lot of interest in the past couple of days once people found out that Wayne Tolleson was going to be on Our Stories, His Glory, and people started telling me, and I'd heard this before too, about how you carried yourself, about uh, how you were very focused academically, that you were very responsible, and that you were, um, you were a strong Christian witness um, even in college during that time, and everybody that's mentions Wayne Tolleson has something positive to say about you and that makes uh, me feel even better knowing that one of my heroes growing up was also a person of solid character. Can you tell me at Western and even later on and we're going to talk about your major league baseball career momentarily but some people who were very highly influential in your spiritual and character development either at Western or any other times as well. You know, I think so much of who I am today is based on my faith. And I think it, as I look back, you know, I was very fortunate uh, to, to grow up with loving parents who were Christians, uh, who were Jesus followers. So, yes. um, so you know, I think that is, is really the platform, the foundation, you know, as, as far as my faith. And then um, really when, when you start to move away from home, uh, you know, th things change. You don't have your mom and dad there. And I think that, you know, based on the foundation I left with, I was, I was able to, you know, continue in my faith. And let, let me say right up front, I'm, I'm far, far, far from perfect then and far, far from perfect today. But uh, I, I am a Jesus follower and I, I continue to this day uh, to do everything I can to, to glorify him and what I did. And and it's something that people may not know as, as a young kid, I, you know, I always knew that I, I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to play baseball in the big leagues. And, uh, you know, from the time I accepted Christ as my Savior, I always went at that to glorify God. And, and I think that's a d differential in, in, you know, maybe the way I attacked that whole sports arena and faith arena versus other people. But as far as influential people, you know, I, I think anyone that's played sports would point to their coaches. And, 
you know, as I look back at my time at Western, uh, Bobby Waters, he was a he was a quarterback for the San Francisco uh, 49ers at one time, and uh, I, I remember him as a gentle giant. He was he was a guy that could get his point across and get, get his point across and, and um, ball without yelling and screaming and um, you know being a typical football coach and that was a big influence on me and I think uh, same thing with coach Bob, uh, coach Bill Haywood um, you know my first encounter with coach Haywood I talked to him numerous times on the telephone during the recruiting process but I'd never met him personally and the, the day I went up that I described earlier coach Haywood was actually out of town so I didn't get a chance to to meet him, it wasn't until the, the fall during football season I asked a buddy of mine, Ernie Lasher, who was a defensive end, I said, man, I'd like to go down to baseball field and meet Coach Haywood. What do you think? And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll take you down. And maybe Ernie was a junior. He had played a couple years of football and baseball. And so he took me to, to meet Coach Haywood. And if you can just imagine in your in your mind, Coach Haywood was kind of leaned up against the, uh, the batting cage with his – with his knee propped up there, watching yeah. his hitters hit. And uh, Ernie and I walked up, and Ernie tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, Coach Haywood, uh, I want to introduce you to somebody. And uh, Coach Haywood turned to me, and, and Ernie said, this is Wayne Tolleson. And uh, Coach Haywood looked at me, and he said, uh, you don't want to play baseball. <laughs> and he walked <laughs> left the field line. And I thought, wow, that was not what I was expecting. But when I look back, and as, as we all do, when you look back at circumstances, one of the things that, that Coach Haywood did for me as an athlete, did for me as a person, is, is, is he brought a, a toughness and a mentality to me that, you know, only a coach can do. And, and I think that's best said. Uh, that really motivated me. It sure. wasn't a coach that was saying, oh, great, we can't wait to get you out here and look forward to that, this and that it was he just turned away because I wasn't on the baseball field and the baseball players were so I understood exactly what he was doing to motivate me and believe me it did and yeah. uh, as a result you know we had four pretty good years up there yes and, and I would say pretty good is a drastic understatement I heard it uh, and I'm glad and you're glad and he was certainly glad I'm sure at the time that he didn't run you off and, and intimidate you and scare you out of playing baseball because you were um, Southern Conference uh, Player of the Year uh, in 78 and all Southern Conference uh, your junior and senior year. And, and I was talking with another friend, uh, and I, think I told you this before we went on, but he, he said you're the fastest base runner he's ever seen. He's, uh, Bill Dave's a friend of mine here with catcher at Gardner-Webb uh, back in the day when you were playing. He knew you were going to steal. And you didn't go on the first pitch, so he knew you had to go to the second pitch. So he called for the pitch out, and he declares that they pitched out. And by the time he got the ball, uh, you were there, and there was no throw. He didn't even bother throwing it. He's like, if you pitch out, and you still can't get a guy. He's got to be blazing fast. So I, I know you carried that with you um, into the major leagues, your ability to steal bases, your ability to, to, to play shortstop and be an offensive uh a producer as well. So when you when you finish um, when you finish that Western uh, your senior year, um, I, I would assume leading the nation in receiving uh, and doing what you did on the baseball field, you might have had some potential choices for uh, the football direction or baseball. How did you end up uh, uh, taking the baseball route? Well, my my junior year at Western, I was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the eleventh round and. Uh, you know, like like most kids, you know, that's that's a dream come true to have the opportunity to, you know, to sign a professional contract. But at the time, it just wasn't the right thing for me to do. And um, so I passed on that. And then my senior year, I went back and I somewhat took a chance playing college football and baseball again. And uh, again, that my senior year, I was drafted in the eighth round by Texas and, of course, uh, signed then. Uh, as, as far as football, I, I did have the opportunity, the distinct opportunity, uh, to be the first uh, Western foot, football player to play in a postseason game, and that was the uh, 
the Can Am Bowl down in Tampa, Florida, okay. it's Canadian All Stars against the American All Stars, and you know during that practice week, there's, there's quite a few funny stories that happened happened during that week. Uh, but um, and I don't know if we have time to get into them, but there were some funny things that happened. But the New England sure. Patriots did did ask me to to walk on as a free agent. Uh, from that, I remember the guy asking me down there, and I just looked at him and told him, I said, look, I really appreciate it. I'm honored, but I'm going to play baseball because that's what I knew I was going to do. I, I really went and played in the All-Star game. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I, I did it for personal reasons, of course, but I also did it for Western Carolina because they had never had anyone do that. So uh, long story short, I the first four plays of that game, I caught three passes, and then on the fourth play, I was kind of not cuckoo, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and ended up uh, over on the sidelines. And uh, once I came to, I remember going up to the coach who had won, you know, three or four great cups, was a great Canadian coach, and I just said, "Look, coach, uh, I'm I'm done. I'm I'm going to play baseball, so I'm just going to sit over and watch the rest of the game." So that that was kind of how my college football career ended. Uh, and and it was in a good way. Yeah, and so I think uh, what you realize now, and you realize then in the first quarter, it sounds like of that game that the sport of baseball was going to be a lot less tough on your body uh, than <laughs> than that uh, NFL football. So we're glad we're glad you chose what you did. And by the way, I'm glad you chose to go back to that senior year, or I wouldn't have been able to see you uh, lead the nation in receiving and follow every game. Uh, so. You make it, um, and you get called up to the Texas Rangers now. And then, as we know, and, and folks that know a good bit about you, you ended up getting traded to the White Sox. Uh, and, and soon afterwards, you end up being a New York Yankee. And it's a whole different atmosphere at being a New York Yankee. What was uh, what was it like to step out in the Yankee Stadium and wear that uniform and represent the Yankees with all those people hollering for you, at you, with you, whatever they might be. Tell me about your major league career and how it affected you personally and in your character and those sort of things. Well, you know, you know, first of all, you know, it, it was just such a blessing to, to be able to, um, to get to the big leagues. I, I mean, as a kid, that, that was always a dream come true. And, you know, I tell people I, 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 I'm one of those guys that has had the opportunity to live live their dream. You know, I, I married my high school sweetheart who was a homecoming queen. Uh, I had a chance to play high school. I had a chance to play college. I had a chance to play at the pro level. And and then, you know, I had two wonderful uh, boys that, that grew up into incredible men. And I had the chance to watch them play uh, baseball and golf at the University of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then I had a chance to see both of those guys go into the pro ranks. And and now I'm blessed with six granddaughters. And so, you know, when I say that I'm a blessed man, that I've lived my dream, I truly mean it. So, um, and, 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 and I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in direction equals destination. So in other words, once you start down a path and you head toward a destination, I think it's really important how you go down that path. And you know, when I reflect back and say, well, why did why did I make it, and some of these other people that truly had more talent than me, uh, truly had a, a bigger body, a, a more athletic body, why why me? And I, I think it has a lot to do with the way you live your life. And um, so. This direction equals destination has always been something that's been been meaningful to me. And I don't want to get off track, but you mentioned getting to the Yankees. So how that yeah. happened is I was playing with the White Sox. I played third base, I think, uh, 50, 57 out of 58 days. And uh, all of a sudden I was sitting on the bench and, um, you know, Tony La Russa got fired and, Within just a very short time, I was in the dugout, and um, the trainer came up to me and said, Hawk Harrison wants to see you upstairs. And I go, get a call, baby. You're kidding. I don't want, I don't, I'm not going upstairs. And uh, it was Chicken Willie. He was our trainer. And he, he said, no, no, no. Hawk Harrelson's up in uh, La Russa's office. He wants to see you. And so um, 
I went up the steps and there sat Hall Carlson and the conversation was uh, very enlightening. Hall said, man, you've done everything we've asked you to do here in Chicago. Uh, my question to you is, how do you like New York? Wow. And I said, side. <laughs> and he said, pinstripes. And I said, I love it. So that's how I learned I had been traded to the Yankees in the middle of a, of a Chicago White Sox game. And then the next day, uh, Joel Skinner and I were traded together. We drove to Milwaukee, and uh, I walked into the Yankee clubhouse. The first guy I see is Lou Pinella. Mm -hmm. And like you say, it, it gives me cold chills now as I tell you the story. And, and Lou, you know, puts his hand on my shoulder, and he said, uh, I hope you're ready. You're hitting second and playing shortstop. And uh, we were facing Teddy Higuera that day. He was a left-hander, was having a great year. And I remember going two for three, and we won. And uh, it just all fell together perfectly, except for the fact that, uh, you know, I'd left my wife in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. and, and she had to sell the car. She had to close to do all that on her own. And then, um, you know, I was I was on my way to New York. So it was quite a quite – a, uh, quite a fast and, and fun start uh, becoming Yankee. And you did really well and, and obviously made a lot of folks from Western North Carolina, Western Carolina University, upstate South Carolina, and to be honest, all of us, uh, very proud because we knew of your character as well. And uh, But a lot of people don't, if you look on Wikipedia about folks, and, and that may be true uh, on Wikipedia for you, it kind of it almost makes it look like somebody, when they finish their their major league career, NFL career, NBA career, that they just kind of dropped off the map. But there's life after that, and you um, have done a lot of things since then. And so I wanted to give you a chance to kind of get folks up to date. I know that you did some, some work uh, for a long time for the food vending company and through um, a connection with Jerry Richardson as well. So tell us. Once you finished in 1990, kind of what Wayne Tolleson has been doing. We know you mentioned your wife earlier, Kim, and, and your two boys, and then uh, y'all are all surrounded by a bunch of females because you got six granddaughters. By the way, the graphic that I have up only has four of them, so those boys are uh, <laughs> they're out distance in all your pictures uh, as well. But tell us kind of what your life's been like since 1990 after you finished your major league career. Well, you know, there's there's – there's no one that likes to finish a career, uh, particularly one where you have a uniform on that, uh, you know, I always hoped that I could play till they tore the uniform off of me. And that's exactly what the Yankees did uh, about two weeks before the season ended. Uh, Hulk Harrelson, not Hulk Harrelson, but uh, Gene Michael, the general manager, called me in and um, he said, uh, Tolly, he said, I've got you in here because we're going to release you and at the end of the season. He said, but we want you to stay in the organization. And um, I went, wow, what an honor. And uh, tell me more. And he said, yeah, you, you know, we'd like you to go down to the minor leagues and, and uh, work with our kids. And uh, we think you can be a, you know, we'll let you do whatever you want to do. You know, if you want to just be a coach, you can coach. We'll plug you in as a manager. And um, I told I told Gene I said well you know I had a I had another one of my uh, managers tell me a couple years ago that you know you should never get into coaching until you're sure you're finished playing and I said Gene I'm just not sure I'm finished playing and so um, that conversation kind of ended with I'm honored that you want me to stay but I'm going to try to play another year and. Um, a long story short, that that next year never happened, and I kind of got into the real world and um, uh, got into the food, beverage, and merchandise business with a company called Centerplate that at the time Jerry Richardson owned and uh, made a 20-year career there as a senior vice president of sales and uh, was really – it was a really fun time, transitional time for my life. But I think more than anything, I, I saw during that transition period that I, I really wanted to be a father to my sons. And yeah. um, the easy thing would have been to stay in baseball because that's what I knew. Uh, that's what I was good at. Uh, I felt like I knew the league as good as anybody did after 10 years in the American League. 
but I just felt like there was a high, higher calling. And of course, my wife was in agreement. She wanted to come home and live here in Spartanburg. And so I, I think it's important for people to know that that decision wasn't just me not wanting to coach baseball. It was also for me being a full-time father because, you know, I had two incredible young men and, and they, they didn't get to see their dad very much when I was playing baseball. Sure. And, then, you know, that, that, that led to a, a 20 year career in the, in the corporate world, which is, uh, which was a wonderful time for me. And so as we begin to wrap up, I know that one thing you do now, Wayne, is you, you try to give back to the game doing, uh, lessons for, for, um, uh, budding baseball players, aspiring baseball players. And I know you have one even coming up in, in just a little bit. And, and so you are still giving back. And so what, I, what I want to do is, is, um, throw a deep question at you that I, is typical of me and our stories his glory and ask you um, what you feel like your, your purpose is you know what what gets you up in the morning why do you feel like God put you on this earth and what is Wayne Tollison's uh, purpose in life that's about as deep as you can get uh, but if you come on our stories his glory boy you get handed that one so how would you answer that you're right. That's a that's a that's a really deep question, and uh, it's something that you know I, I think I answer every day by what I do. And I think uh, I think one thing I, I just turned 65 uh, a, a couple weeks ago, and you know I, I like to feel like my story's still being written. It, you know, the the early part of my life it was all sports. It was all uh, you know what I could do and uh, how I could advance uh, myself, uh, you know, and, and, and my wife and, 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 the, and the, in the game of life, if you will. And, you know, I did that, you know, through a faith walk, but now that's all changed. And, um, you know, every, every day that I wake up, I'm, you know, I kind of I kind of look at the, the mindset that I have because I think your mindset, your mentality – you know, it, it has to stay positive. It has to stay confident. Uh, it has to be opportunistic. And that, that's one of the things that, um, you know, I kind of uh, push down here in, in my basement, in my hitting cage with my young players, is that did you get better today? And, mm -hmm. and how did you get better today? And today is an opportunity to get better and, uh, and advance. And so, you know, I think we do that through my faith. Uh, I do that through my faith through a, um, you know, day-to-day -day soaping process that um, my wife and I do together, uh, as well as our church. Uh, that's basically a, a quiet time each day where we're reading scripture. We're, we're, we're looking at the observation of that scripture. We're looking at the application of the scripture, and then we're praying over scripture. So, I, you know, I like to feel like that's my purpose now in life, as it was when I was playing, but, you know, minus the playing part. So um, I think each day that I wake up is, is a new challenge. It's a new challenge to uh, not only for myself, but those that I come in contact with. And um, as I said earlier, I, I'm a firm believer in direction equals destination. And I think some, sometimes in life we don't realize that we can end up exactly where we don't want to be the exact way we end up where we want to be. Now, that sounds a little confusing, but it's the truth, meaning that each step we take towards a destination, we're getting closer to that destination, yeah. whether it's where we want to be or whether we don't want to exactly. be there. So. You know, I, I think if in life, if you can look at, you know, what do you want your destination to be? And, of course, if you're a believer, you want your destination to be eternity in heaven. And and so each day you just have to look at your direction, and is that where you're headed? Because you do get to that destination you don't want to be the exact same way, and that's one step at a time. So I'm always encouraging my, my young hitters to, to take that one step at a time in the right direction. Wayne, that's an outstanding answer. And I, I would just like to add in that you mentioned a little bit earlier, and I hope our listeners will really hear what you said. And, and uh, I'm going to summarize that. You said a little bit earlier that you were, were able and privileged and blessed to be able to live 
your dream. But I, I'm going to take that a little bit deep, deeper and say that um, other people can can do that too, not because everybody's going to be able to be a athletic superstar and a football, all everything and a baseball major leaguer. But essentially you were living your dream because you were living out and seeking the plan that God had for your life. And if folks do that who are listening today, then essentially they are living out their dream, whether that, whether that includes uh, recognition and, and, you know, public acclaim and, using that platform, or if it's in a much more humble situation. So uh, I'm encouraged by that because even at my age, and I'm, I just turned 57, and I think we have a very similar birthday. Mine was November 23rd, and I think you said yeah. yours was right around maybe, would that have been 22nd or so? 22nd, correct. Okay, and so uh, I wake up and do the same thing, and, and you, I don't want to be defined by the fact that I was a college baseball coach for over 30 years, because that's in the past. I want to see what God has for me now. And I sense that that's what you do, that you're not going to allow, that you, you're a little shy about, you know, not, not embarrassed, but, you know, your humility doesn't want me to say a whole lot about exactly how outstanding you were. But yet you're using it as a platform, but you don't want to be defined by that. You want to be defined by the person, not the accolades. And I really appreciate and respect that. And I know that to your granddaughters, you're, you're, the, you're the grandfather. That's what they care about most. To your wife, to your lovely wife Kim, uh, you're a you're a husband first and foremost, more than you are a former uh, superstar. So I respect and appreciate you coming on today and sharing that because I think it's going to be very inspirational for people who have heard of you or knew what you did as an athlete, but now they know you even more as a fine, solid Christian human being. And I. And I'll wrap it up because I know I want to honor your time. But I'll wrap it up by giving you the last word, and then then we'll sign out for our stories, His glory. I'll give you the last word, Wayne. Well, uh, first of all, Rusty, I, I want to thank you and encourage you in what you're doing because uh, you know, as, as a former athlete, as uh, as a dad, uh, as as a grandfather, as pops, if they, as they call me. Uh, it, you know, it's it's all aspects of life that are important, and it, you know, I, I'll, I'll I'll close by saying this, and this is something that I say to to my players a lot down here in the basement, is you know, as far as their swing, as far as their performance, as far as, far as their uh, their leadership, as far as their attitude, uh, their effort, their their determination, I always tell them, don't. Tell me you've got it. Show me you've got it. Yeah. So I think that's important for us all. Uh, and I'm guilty at times of giving lip service and not really getting it done. But I, I, I understand that it's not about telling people you've got it. It's about showing people you've got it. And so, uh, again, I, I just really appreciate your time uh, with me, Rusty. And, uh, I, and I appreciate you inviting me on. And thank you, Wayne, for being on again. I hope that uh, folks uh, uh, did not recognize that I was indeed starstruck. And, uh, but I would really uh, love to stay in touch and, and follow you and continue to see how my, uh, my hero, one of my heroes from growing up, Wayne Tolleson, um, continues on in his, his Christian faith. And uh, I just thank you for being here today, and I'm going to um, let you sign off and get to your baseball lesson, and then I'll I'll have 15 or 20 seconds to wrap up our stories, his glory. Wayne, God's blessings to you and your lovely family, and uh, again, hope that our paths cross sometime soon. Okay, Rusty, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Okay, folks, you you heard that, and and I did my very best to not display how much in awe I am. It truly, Wayne Tolleson was a. Uh, a very strong role model for me. We, we were very similar in, as athletes in the sense of height and weight, but not in talent. He had a tremendous amount of talent in football and baseball, and I um, couldn't even hold a candle to that. But I was inspired by him. But now, uh, through the years, I have discovered that um, I'm even more inspired by his Christian faith and his commitment to waking up every day and trying to make the world a better place, which is what our stories, his glory, is all about. We all have stories, and we all have uh, things to share, and some um, 
uh, will have more acclaim and some will have more stardom and you may not be in a hall of fame uh, but you're certainly if you're seeking the Lord in everything you do then you are living the dream that's it for this week's edition of Our Stories His Glory I'll be back soon God bless